it's evident Ghana rigged in a lot of revenue from the year of return initiative. Aside the glory, aside the economic gains, what are the fallouts of this very initiative? And so this morning, we're engaging some diasporans from the UK on the experiences, the good side, the bad side, and the ugly side. This is Daily Rant. Let's keep talking. Jumoke, you guys have been in Ghana. You've enjoyed every bit of your stay here. How would you describe your return? I mean, it's a great initiative. I think it's fantastic that we are inviting Africa's stolen children back to come and enjoy the land of their forefathers. Um, I personally wish that they were inviting everyone and not just people who were non-disabled because one of the things that I found is that a lot of the events that they had on, a lot of the places they were being held weren't necessarily disability friendly. And it's like, are you saying that only certain members of the diaspora are welcome yeah. or are we all welcome to come home because i'm a member of the diaspora too so i should be able to access all of the events all of the cultural or you know fun events that everyone else is accessing but no provisions were made and so it's like obviously there's a problem in infrastructure in ghana anyway when it comes to disability but if you are making this special effort to say that you know what we're going to say everyone is welcome to come home we think that maybe you'd put some extra things in place or try a little bit to accommodate everyone that is coming i also think it's a wonderful initiative but one thing that i um, have noticed online is that a lot of the parts of the initiative they've been directed towards the diaspora I don't know how far this is true because I haven't looked into it but uh, members of the diaspora um, they have been um, so I've found online offered land either at a reduced rate or free or they've been able to become citizens now looking at the land part this is something that why are we not considering the people that already live here that are already here living in Ghana and these are benefits and perks that we're trying to give to diasporans yes you know they are from this land but they don't live in this land like we don't live in this land so now why should we as members of the diaspora get preferential treatment compared to the people that are already here that have already been paying taxes that they have the purchasing power yeah, but is like, first of all, okay, let's say that we do, but then that is because of all the privileges that we have access to because of the currencies that, you know, we're used to spending. But then we are now doing it off the backs of the people that actually live here. They, they are the ones that live here. They should also be able to point to a land and, you know, say that this is mine. Why is it? The, but it's true, though. Like, would I love to have a place in Ghana? Yes, of course I would. But just because I'm from the UK or have certain privileges because of my citizenship doesn't mean that I should be able to cut in front of my brothers and sisters that are already here. Yeah. So, uh, Kim also mentioned about disability. Can you give me a scenario where maybe you went for an event that you couldn't access certain places? Well, no, I think it's in general, I think that's my experience of Ghana in general, like other than major five star hotels like Golden Tulip or other places, um, you don't really have access. And so it wouldn't be a case of let me choose one event that was happening during year of return that wasn't accessible. It's how accessible is Accra? Do you know what I mean? In general. And so my issues will be to do with that. Yeah, we're talking about year of return, but at the same time, it's like beyond that <laughs> what happens and so it's important that there's infrastructure here already like one of the things that I know is that had if we're talking about um, disability and access we're talking about people who perhaps are more disadvantaged coming from the UK as Jamoka said like it means that I have access to currency so in the UK I may not be at the upper echelons of the financial ladder exactly. but over here the pound will be king right exactly. so it means that even as a disabled person over here I might have more privilege than someone who is disabled over here who wants to access the same year of return events but they won't be able to because one of the things that also is the case is that all of them were priced so high that most locals wouldn't have access to them yeah. and so it's like we're returning to whom are we only returning to fraternize with each other or are we returning to actually intermingle learn the culture interact with our brothers and sisters learn about ourselves reunite or and and so there's it's striated in that way and so those those were some of my issues because it's like cool I can't get into places but also can people like me get into places no but also can average citizens get into places no so what is what it what are we returning to so with this fallout that you know Kim has just talked about would you say we were not really prepared for this year of return thing 
why I'm not going to speak on the government's preparedness. Let me just go ahead and say that. However, what I will say is that, as Kim had rightly mentioned, if we are going to have an initiative and we are going to be expecting more people, then we should have certain elements and things in place. So for the, let's say nobody that was coming from the diaspora was disabled, but the sheer number that was coming, we need to work on at least the roads. We need to work on people being able to get in and out in a timely manner. Yeah. So some concerns that you know were raised by locals here in Ghana were the fact that prices had escalated yeah. just because diasporans were coming in town. Yeah. In your own assertion, do you think whatever you bought, whatever things you bought, were they expensive to you? Because we were complaining because mm. you guys were coming in. Mm. But were they expensive to you? Me, I wasn't shopping at ShopRite, so me, I can't talk about that. Like for everything that we were buying, we were buying, buying from local places. We were trying to put our money back in the hands of local people and local entrepreneurs. And that's the whole point, right? Is not coming here to come and eat at Kempinski and eat at, you know, Coco Lounge and all of those places, but actually coming and experiencing what Ghana is supposed to be like and giving back to our actual community. Because mm. a lot of the places that are expensive are places that are not owned by Ghanaians. They're not they're places that have Ghanaian interests at heart. I think Ghana has the most female entrepreneurs in the world or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, those are the people who need my money. Cheaper. Look, they're the people who need my money. So that's where I was giving my money to. In terms of whether it be more expensive to me, that question is disingenuous. Of course, if I'm coming from the UK with a pound, it's going to be different to a CD. Do you know what I mean? So, but for the locals, I don't But I just want to know, at a point, did you feel like, okay, okay, I have got the money, though, but this is too expensive. I did think that about a lot of things, but in relation to the average person, I was always thinking about when I was buying something, I'd be like, yeah, but for the average person, I know a lot of local people and some of them aren't earning enough to be able to spend 10 CDs on this every day. Yeah. And so that was concerning because it's like, okay, it's great. People want to make profit and companies want to make profit, but the locals are suffering because of it. So the year of return will end up being devastating to the citizens rather than empowering and edifying and that's a problem that's it's not supposed to be just a case of you know okay yeah let's try and make as much money as we can off the diasporans it's supposed to be okay we're returning not just physically but spiritually to our home and what does that mean it means building our society building our community it's not just about making profit and it, especially if me coming here is detrimental to my mothers and my brothers my cousins my sisters then should i come and so that's how I it's feel. It's a multi-million question. Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, did you feel at a point that, you know, things were expensive? No. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to expand on that. Like Kim said, we're coming from the UK where we spend the pound. So what we are able to afford is, of course, different to what the local Ghanaian is able to afford. Some of the things, the vegetables, the fruits that you're trying to sell over here, I wouldn't pay that much in London. So, yeah. Okay, vegetables, I think, I think vegetables are, are really expensive, here, even here in Ghana. Which is ridiculous, because why should it be expensive? You can literally grow your own things. It need not be expensive. But why these things are expensive, because like Kim said, is that it's not for Ghanaian interest. It's not yeah. coming from Ghana. It's just for somebody using, yeah. yeah, it's somebody using the land to make profit, to take it back to wherever they come from, not naming any countries. <laughs> as much as we'd like to say, okay, yeah, this is the year of return. We've been free from colonial rule for however many decades or whatever. The lasting effects are still there. Like if you are white, I will want to see to you first. I will see the value in you first. How can I be waiting for two hours and then Billy Bob over there somewhere comes through and he's able to jump in line in front of me somebody's getting slapped so thank you god bless you okay for, finally what is that one thing that you're taking along with you what is that one thing that you're taking along with you okay uh, the food was good blah 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 what's that one thing teach him okay first Jim okay yay father god okay one thing um yay 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 the food Oh, I love the food. The food's very good. I will say the weather, actually. I know that sounds so cliche and so boring, but the weather that we have to go back to in London, yeesh. <laughs> I want to I wanna take some of the heat with me, some of the vitamin D, some of the sunshine, and the smile and warmth of uh, Ghanaian people that we've been able to meet. Yeah. 
I think um, one of the things I'm taking with me is that there are many stories. Um, sometimes it's very easy to sit somewhere and decide that there's one narrative. You say, okay, well, this is the narrative for the people who live in this place or this region and this is who they are. But coming here has, although I knew it already, has really expanded my understanding of how many stories there are to tell and how mine of coming home, even within my story of coming home, there are so many different ones. We've talked about like disability, we've talked about access, we've talked about all those things. And yes, despite those things being negative things, I'm still home, I'm still able to come somewhere where I'm Amma and that's a common name and you know I can eat my food, I can have access to the weather and climate my DNA recognises and so even within that story of kind of hardship there is a beautiful story beneath that and so it's that idea that yeah there are multiple stories. Yeah. Okay. Well, the year of return appears to have ended, but what you don't know is 2020 is beyond the year of return. So you've had the experiences from Kim and Jumo, okay? I don't know what yours is. If you're watching, just log on to our social media platform. Just share that with us. On Facebook is News on TV3, and on Twitter is a News TV3. Kim Chi from Golden Tulip here in Accra. Thanks for watching. Have a good morning.